Welcome to this video on the normal anatomy and physiology of the hearing organ. Before we begin, consider the following questions. How does the middle ear match impedances between the external ear and the perilymph? What are the mechanisms through which the middle ear amplifies sound pressure admitted into the inner ear? How does the microanatomy of the inner ear convert sound energy into electrical signals? How are inner ear hair cells organized according to pitch? The ear consists of the external, middle and inner ear. The external ear describes the pinna, external auditory canal and the lateral surface of the tympanic membrane. The pinna is shaped to focus and direct sound energy down the external auditory canal and to the tympanic membrane. The middle ear serves two functions, to match the sound impedance between air and perilymph and to amplify the sound energy entering the inner ear. When sound energy travelling through air comes into contact with fluid, due to a difference in impedance, the majority of energy is reflected off the surface of the fluid. This is why it is so much quieter under water than above. The acicular chain serves to match the impedances between the air and the perilymph of the inner ear. In addition, the middle ear also amplifies the sound pressure that is admitted to the inner ear through three mechanisms. The catenary lever, which results in a two-fold increase in sound amplification. This is due to the convexity of the tympanic membrane and the radial direction of the collagen fibers within the tympanic membrane. This focuses sound energy directly onto a single point called the umbo. The acicular chain also has a mechanical lever effect. This is because the handle of the malleus is approximately one and a half times longer than the long process of the incus. As a result, this amplifies the force exerted from the umbo onto the stapes superstructure. Thirdly, there is a hydraulic lever effect, which results in an approximate 20 fold increase in sound amplification. This is because of the differences in the surface area between the tympanic membrane and the oval window. The membranous labyrinth can be considered a single tube that has been curled into a spiral. The oval window allows sound energy to enter the inner ear and the round window enables the same energy to escape. When viewed from a cross section, we can appreciate the three fluid filled chambers that comprise the membranous labyrinth. These are the endolymph filled scala media, which contains the sound transducers, along with the perilymph containing scala vestibuli and scala tympani. These two perilymph containing chambers are in fact continuous and merge at the apex of the cochlea called the helicotrema. Sound energy enters the scala vestibuli through the oval window and is conducted across to the scala media where it is detected by the organ of corti. The scala media consists of a basilar membrane upon which the hearing organ is found. The other sides include the stria vascularis which is a bed of capillaries and secretory cells that produce endolymph and the resinous membrane which separates the scala media from the scala vestibuli. The organ of corti consists of three rows of outer hair cells along with a single row of inner hair cells. The tectorial membrane lies on top of these hair cells. The outer hair cells do not detect hearing but rather serve as cochlear amplifiers. When vibrations of the tectorial membrane caused by vibrations of the endolymph are detected by the outer hair cells, these contract producing a sound wave which is detected by the inner hair cells. The deflections of the inner hair cells from the sound wave result in potassium entering the cell, depolarizing the cell and resulting in neurotransmitter release to the spiral ganglion cells. This in turn generates an action potential carried to the brain via the cochlear nerve. Depending on the location along the cochlear duct, different hair cells respond to different pitches of sound. This arrangement is described as tonotopic and is due to the stiffness of the basilar membrane. The basilar membrane is thickest and stiffest at the basal turn of the cochlea and thinnest and floppiest towards the apex. Higher frequency sounds are able to exert their vibrational energy best in stiffer media and so are detected by hair cells at the basal turn. Higher energy, higher frequency sounds are not able to propagate all the way to the apex before being absorbed which is why their corresponding hair cells must be located closest to the oval window. In contrast, low frequency sounds also have less vibrational energy and are able to reach the cochlear apex and so are detected by hair cells on a thin, floppy basilar membrane towards the apex of the cochlea. 
I hope you found this video useful. If so, please consider subscribing and let us know what you'd like us to cover next.